Praise the Lord, everybody. It's time for us to worship the Lord together. Grab your family, and let's do it real big tonight. This is for the Lord. Come on, we got to do it together, everybody. Sing. We love to. We love to call your name. It's something that we cannot explain. But it happens when we proclaim.
and your word is hidden in our heart. It's in our hearts. And we bless you, Jesus. Hey, somebody give him glory. We're going to put all our trust in you, Lord. Trust in all. Bless your name, Lord. Hide your word in our hearts. We give you glory, Jesus. Magnify your name. I want to pray with you on tonight. I want to pray for your families. I want to pray for your finances. I want to pray for your future. Let's come into agreement. Thou in whom our soul takes delight, our comfort by day, our song in the night. Lord, you are our hope. You are our strength. And you are our all. We're grateful for you. We give your name honor. We give you praise. And we're mindful you deserve all of the glory. Speak to every need. Heal every hurt. Answer every question. Resolve every issue. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm glad to be with you on tonight. Sunday, we had an amazing time together uh, that we're not going to let anybody take advantage of us in this season. I'm on tiptoe anticipation for we're just a stone's throw away from our demonstration Sunday. This coming Sunday, all of us collectively are going to be modeling what it is that God has ordained which is the gift of tithing. I know that there are some of you who are just wobbling still about it, haven't been resolved, up against the ropes trying to figure out, can you afford to do it? Is this the right time in the middle of a pandemic? And I want us to uh, unpack a treasure trove of scripture. Would you join me? We've been in uh, the top 10 for the last five weeks. This is our last week. And in so closing, I want to go where I have avoided for this entire series. I want to end up right here. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3, uh, verse number 10. Would you get your Bibles? Malachi chapter 3, verse number 10. Only one verse uh, for the time that is uh, allotted to me can I uh, afford to unpack. I'm appreciative again for our social media ministry, for our musicians, uh, for our praise team uh, leading us into the Holy of Holies. It's just Tuesday and it's already been a long week. You're having to adjust from uh, all of uh, Labor Day weekend activities and now being of sober mind. You all are saints. You ought to be sober in body too. Uh, but having a sober mind, you ought to be uh, ready to uh, break open the bread of life. Malachi chapter 3, verse number 10. It's the last book of the Old Testament. It's right before you get to Matthew. Malachi chapter 3, verse number 10. Bring all the tithes in the storehouse so there'll be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven, armies... I will open the window of heaven for you. I'll pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough to take anything in. Try it. Put me to the test. I want to teach. I really do. I want to teach tonight using as a subject, I've got you covered. I've 
got you covered. I want to invite you to please go to the note-taking section in your smartphone, your tablet, your device, even your laptop. Uh, there's some principles that I want to roll out to you on today that I think will serve you well for your intellectual consideration long after group therapy would have concluded. I've got you covered. Isn't it amazing that uh, before uh, the last five months, hardly any of us knew what PPE was. Now you can barely turn on the news or television or walk in a store without being met with some announcement or signage about PPE. Personal protective equipment. Most of the nation, may I dare say, most of the world never even talked about or considered personal protective equipment before COVID-19. It's warned to minimize exposure to hazards that cause both injuries and illnesses. There are five of them, articles or pieces of PPE, whether you want to deal with goggles, face shields, gloves, hand sanitizer, full hazmat suits, respirators. Those are the things that the World Health Organization, as well as uh, CDC, the Center for Disease Control, argue and recommend that you ought to have for personal protective equipment. Goggles, face shields, gloves, respirator, hazmat suits. All over the nation, particularly in impoverished communities, there seems to be a shortage of PPE. Never in my life have I ever seen a backlog for hand sanitizer in the supermarket. Never ever before this occurrence has Amazon had to restrict how much sanitizer could you buy. Never before has there been such a hunt of people trying to find a mask so that they can gain the entrance into a store. And while it is that PPE is in uh, uh, short abundance and supply, I want to uh, argue tonight that tithers will never run short of PPPPP. Tithers will never run short of PPPPP. I want you to stay with me in Malachi chapter 3. Don't take my word for it. Keep your Bible ajar. I want to show you where you're going to find personal protective equipment. And this is just regulated for tithers. The first um, thing, piece of uh, PPE that you're going to receive as a tither, I want you to write this down, is uh, you're going to find provision or you're going to meet the provider. Would you write that down? The first thing I get as a tither is provision or I get the dimension of God that is a provider. Look at verse number 10, because I can tell you don't believe me. Look at verse number 10. I'm in Malachi chapter 3. It shows, here it is, right after you tithe. It says, bring all your tithes in the storehouse. Look at what happens right after you tithe. Right after you tithe, God will throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so many blessings that you won't have room enough to receive. Those who are a part of a covenant of new birth, you already know Sunday is for inspiration. Tuesday is for information. Uh, and so I'm going to dissect this text. He says, hear this, right after you tithe, the Lord says in verse number 10, I'm going to throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour. Interesting, new birth. These are the exact same Hebrew words used in Genesis 7 and 11. Put your finger in Malachi, and I need you to run back to Genesis chapter 7, verse number 11. Same words, 
verbatim. For the great downpour of rain flooded the earth. So the same language God uses is Genesis 7 uh, in Malachi 3 in 10 is the same language, here this new birth, that God uses to warn Noah about the flood. Says there's getting ready to be such a downpour of rain. It's going to be a shower of blessings. Now, in this shower of blessings, I need to be clear on the intentionality of the text. It does not mean you're going to be a millionaire. When he showers down the blessings, it does not mean you're going to be in a 20,000 square foot home. It doesn't mean you're going to have uh, the new Bentley truck. That is not what it means. It says, I, here it is. I'm still in verse number 10. I'm going to try to stay right there in that verse today. He says, in that 10, in verse number 10, he says, I will bless you. Lord, help me. I, I was studying, equipping myself to get this to you today. I almost didn't make it out of my study because I'm shouting over the revelation for me. Now, the word bless in the Hebrew in Malachi chapter 3, verse number 10, when he says, I'm going to shower on you and bless you, I need you to know what is the transliteration, translation uh, of what it is that God means. He uses the Hebrew word bless, which means to kneel and to praise would you write that down that uh, blessing in this translation in Malachi chapter 3 verse number 10 means to kneel and to praise pastor I'm lost on what you're trying to tell me he's saying this to all tithers when you tithe I'm going to bless you here it is until you are flooded I'm going to bless you, here it is, until you are drowned in the blessing. Now, the blessing, hear this, remember the, tra the Hebrew translation in Malachi 3 and 10 means to uh, kneel and to praise. Jonathan, only me and you going to get this. It means your next blessing, when you get that blessing, is going to make you want to kneel. When you get that blessing, it's going to make you want to praise. Here it is, because you have been in a drought so long that now that you got it, all you know to do is to kneel and praise him. I am praying you get so blessed that no matter where you are, you're going to feel compelled to kneel and you're going to want to praise. The first thing that you get as a tither is provision and you find out that God is a provider. The second thing, I want you to write this down. Come on, class. Second thing that I want you to do uh, to write down is when you are a tither, first thing you get is provision and you get the provider. The second thing you get is protection. Protection. Now, uh, I tried to stay in verse number 10, uh, but now I've got to go to verse number 11. I want you to go to verse number 11, uh, and this, again, is only for tithers. In verse number 11, it says, I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your field will not cast their fruit. In other words, here's what he is saying. He says, you will live under the umbrella of my protection. Ah, I, uh, I got to have a transparent moment. I got to tell you this. I, I'm a full-grown man. I'm a full-grown man, and I'm scared of dogs. I'm a full-grown man, uh, and I'm scared of dogs. My best friend uh, in the world, uh, Bishop Rudolph McKissick Jr. in Jacksonville, Florida, I go and visit him. I never go to his house because he lets the dog uh, run free. I don't like it. Meet me at the hotel. Meet me at the restaurant. I'm not coming to the house because you will not put that dog on a leash. I went to the house and uh, uh, watch this. Uh, Bishop McKissick is trying, he's trying to uh, convince me that it's safe when it's a barking uh, dog in the house. And he said, he petting the dog while the dog is looking at me, growling at me. He says, he ain't going to bite you. No, I don't believe it. Uh, he, he ain't going to bother you. I'm backing up. I, I don't want to hear. He says, I got him trained. Sit. And the dog would sit. Lord, he, he got a mixed pit bull with no leash. And, and, and all he's saying is sit. 
He's looking at me. God knows. I can tell looking in his eyes, he want to bite me. He want to taste of this dark chocolate. And I refuse to let him get close to me. But the owner told him, sit. And I'm telling you that the enemy, don't you know the enemy uh, desires to sift you like wheat? But I prayed for you. I prayed for you that your faith would not fail. I want to say to every hellhound, every demon, every witch, every warlock that was aimed to devour your harvest this year, I heard God say one word. And that one word wasn't to you. It wasn't to your family. It was to the demon assigned to you. And the one word I heard him say was, sit. Do you understand the authority that God has over your life? That everything that thought it was going to devour your flesh, devour what you've been working on, devouring your harvest, now has got to sit and watch you enjoy the fruit of your labor. Hear this. Uh, the devourer is not in God's character. I got to give that again. The devourer is not in God's character. God is not known to devour. He is known to develop. You know when you lost something if God is in it. Because if you lost something and God is in it, you grew from it. Oh, man. If it was taken from you and you still stuck, then the enemy has left his DNA. Every now and again, you got to thank God for what happened in the permissive will of God of what he allowed to be taken away from you. He is protecting you. Here it is. So that your fruit don't spoil before time. You know how many people have missed their moment because their grapes died on the vine. They did not have the discipline to pick them and they ate them too early. Number one, when you're a tither, you're going to get God's protection. You're going to have provision. Number two, when you are a tither, you are going to be under protection. Number three, I hope you'll write this down. I'm elated to share it with you. It's so good. It's too much for me to keep to myself. The third thing uh, that you get as a tither, I hope you're going to like this, is you become a participant. What does that mean? Tithing, I hope you can handle it. I don't want to rattle your chain, uh, clutch your pearls. Uh, tithing, hear this, makes you like God. Yeah. Now, I'm getting ready to go into deep water uh, because praising does not make you God-like. He receives praise. Worship does not make you God-like because he is deserving of worship. When I am a tither, I am like God. Why? Because God is a giver. For God so loved the world, here it is, that he gave. Now, I feel bad for tithers who are in love with non-tithers. Because if a giver makes me like God, a taker aligns me with Satan. Uh, the devil comes, read his biography, read uh, his vita, uh, read his resume. The devil comes to steal. The, the enemy, it is natural for him to take. You got to be careful of people who don't even think twice of taking advantage of your niceness. They don't even feel guilty from wasting your time. They don't even feel bad. Of what it is that they snatch from you. Why? Because they have taken on the spirit of Satan. Because Satan is a taker. But God is a giver. God loves a cheerful giver. Why? Uh, because he likes to see something that's in himself. Ah, uh, my, uh, uh, my daughters are uh, almost fluent in Spanish. Almost full. They in honor Spanish, and uh, 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 they were excited because they were in uh, honor Spanish. I can't speak no Spanish. Uh, I, I mean none. After yo, I, I don't have nothing. I ain't got nothing. Uh, then a door called me and said, "Daddy, you ain't gonna believe this. I'm in honors religion." I said, "Now you something." 
you were something. Spanish didn't mean nothing uh, to me because I don't speak Spanish. Uh, I don't know Spanish. Can't read Spanish. Didn't take Spanish. I took French through all of my developmental years. But when it is that I saw she was honest in religion, I was excited. Why? Because I saw me in it. So when it is that I give, God loves a cheerful giver. God gets excited because when he sees you give, watch this, it reminds him of himself. Because he's saying, Lord, they learned that from me. They picked that up from me. They've been watching how it is that I move, how I function, how I flow. So when I see them give, God's chest pokes out and say they've been watching their father. They've been taking notes from their daddy. They got it down packed. I'm excited. We hear from Malachi chapter 3. Can a man rob God? I, I, I got to pause right here. Y'all ain't going to believe this because your pastor, your preachers been butchering this up for years. They've been messing it up for years. All of them tell the event, turn it off right now. You ought to be tuned in right now. Everything you heard on the radio, please turn it off right now. Can a man rob God? And this same preacher who quoted this said, God don't need your money. Now, I'm trying to make the two agree. You said, can a man rob God? Here it is. And then you turn around and say, God don't need my money. Well, if he don't need my money, he shouldn't be mad when I don't tithe. I think you missed uh, really the intentionality of the text. Can a man, can a woman, uh, let's just make it gender neutral. Uh, can a person rob God? Hear this. You are not robbing God of money by not tithing. He don't need your money. He's still going to function. He's going to be God if you don't give. When you are robbing God of, here it is, you are robbing God of the opportunity to bless you. Oh, my gosh. I did, there, there was a guy, um, supervisor, loved him, and uh, just appreciated him, but he was a lazy worker. And uh, uh, the supervisor put in uh, that he deserved to raise a bonus, uh, a surplus. And they said, all right, if he makes it in on time, because he's always late. If he makes it in on time, here it is. The day after Labor Day, if he comes to work on time, we're going to give him the raise. She called to give him a wake-up call. Look, there's something special happening today. I need you to be at work at 859. Something is special is going to happen when you walk through the door. And uh, lo and behold, he had no idea there was a raise waiting on him. There was a promotion waiting on him. There was a bonus waiting for him. But he still stopped at Starbucks. Still stopped at Dunkin' Donuts. Still sat in the car and just started scrolling through Facebook. Walked in at 917 as if nothing happened. The supervisor just shook her head and said, you blew it. Said, what I do? I'm here. I'm prepared. I'm ready. So you don't even understand. Had you just done what I asked, the world was yours. But because you made Starbucks the priority, you put Dunkin' Donuts as a precedent over your responsibility. You missed it. You robbed me the opportunity to bless you. That's what God is saying. That I'm telling you, through uh, this vehicle, in this voice, that if you would just be obedient to Malachi, all of this is getting ready to happen for you. But if you keep shucking and drive, jiving and not taking it seriously, you're getting ready to miss what's getting ready to happen. I'm telling you, God's got you covered if you're a tither. Number one, you find out he's a provider. He shows you provision. Number two, you discover that you are protected. Number three, you are a participant because you begin to act like God. Number four, would you write this down? Number four, when you are a tither, you receive the promises. You receive the promises. I'm going to give you two of the promises that tithers receive. First promise, go to Proverbs chapter 3. You're looking at me. You ought to be looking in your Bible. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Here is the first promise to tithers. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of your crops, 
Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim with new wine. Lord, help me. Y'all don't even know why I'm getting ready to run through the building. I was just preaching about new wine the other day. I got to tell you this real quick. He says, when you show me, when you honor me, you honor me. Your tithe is a form and an act of worship. When you bring it to the house of God, do you know what's going to happen to you? You're going to start living in the overflow. I'll start living in the overflow, and your vats will brim with new wine. I'm telling y'all, you don't even know why I'm getting ready to run through uh, the building, because uh, God just starts connecting dots for me. Is uh, What God does for the tither is he produces the same wine that he had at the wedding feast in Cana. Now, here's what's crazy, y'all, because y'all don't even understand this. Is you remember in Cana, they ran out of wine, and the mother of Jesus said that there's no more wine. And he said, get the water, and I'm going to fill it up and make it wine. That's in John chapter 2. Y'all are missing this, but I'm quoting to you Proverbs chapter 3. So John chapter 2 is a manifestation of Proverbs chapter 3. God says, I'm going to make sure you never run out. If you are a tither, that is Proverbs 3, verse 9 and 10. That's your first promise. Your second promise, I want you to get it, is one of my favorites. I may preach about it on Sunday. I want you to have it. Luke chapter 6, verse number 38. Luke 6, verse 38. I don't have a tattoo, but if I had one, this would I would have. Luke 6, verse number 38. Give, and it will be given unto you. Good measure. Press down, shaken together, and running over. Here's the amazing thing. If you give, I'm going to give it back to you. Press down, shaking together, and running over. Give, and it'll be given to you. Press down, shaking together, and running over. Now, for most of us, we have quoted it, we shout about it, but we've never understood it. Here's what you need to understand about Luke chapter 6, verse 38, is that when Jesus says this, he sang it to farmers. And the reason why it's significant, he says it to farmers in the middle of harvest season. So he says in the harvest season, you always got a bag that you put your harvest in, whether that's corn, whether that's barley, whether that's wheat, you put it in the bag. Watch this, because it's the sign of a harvest. You put it in the bag. Here it is. And after you put it in the bag, the only way you can leave off to know what it is that you produce, you got to weigh it. Mm -hmm. So he says, what it is that you get in this harvest, it's going to be a good measure. It's going to be a heavy weight. But after you measure it, don't walk out. That ain't it. I need you to put your foot in it because there's still room in the bag. You got to press it down so you can make room for more that's getting ready to happen. Y'all don't like this. Then you got to shake it up uh, because there's still some more stuff that I want to put in the bag. And after you've weighed it, after you pressed it down, after you've shaken it up, watch this. You think you're ready to close the bag, but that ain't it. It's still more I want to put in the bag because it's getting ready to run over. Y'all to miss your shout on a Tuesday night. You ought to be excited that your harvest is going to be too much for you to carry. Every time you think God is through, he's going to push it down so he can make room for something else so that you can shake it together and still is getting ready to break the bag. That's four blessings for tithers that you're going to have, number one, provision. Number two, you're going to have protection. Number three, you are a participant. Number four, you get the promises. Here's the best one because God always saves the best for last and I'm getting out the way. Is the fifth one. I want you to write this and increase the font of your type space. Here it is. Is that you've got to tithe. Your fifth blessing is because tithing pays. The fifth benefit is that tithing pays. Fifth benefit is that tithing pays pays. My uh, late grandmother Pauline Lucas Williams used to sing a song. They don't even sing in church no more. She used to sing a song that says it pays to serve Jesus. I know y'all don't know that. That's, that's a generational divide. But I'm telling you, it pays to serve Jesus. Uh, we, we, we're living in uh, in a different kind of time, in a different kind of era, different kind of element. Uh, and I'm uh, grateful when my daughters were born I was in the delivery room. 
grateful that I was able to be in the delivery room. I had to get myself together, but I soldiered it. Uh, I handled it. I, I can't say I came out like a champ, but I survived. Uh, but I was in the delivery room. Just a generation ago, when, uh, when I was born, men were not allowed in the delivery room uh, with uh, their wives. And so the, the waiting room used to be just men. The story is told about uh, four men who were in the waiting room waiting for their wives to deliver. They're pacing, smoking cigarettes, cigars, biting their nails. At that time, there was no sonogram to tell them whether it was male or female. Didn't know what was happening. They just had to literally wait in the waiting room. I want you to know that there were four men waiting in the waiting room, waiting to hear what it is that their wives delivered. A nurse came out after several hours. A nurse came out and said, um, is there a Mr. Brown in the waiting room? Man jumped up, waved his hand. I'm Mr. Brown. He said, Mr. Brown, I got good news for you. You got twins. Mr. Brown said, Lord, isn't that ironic? I got twins, and I'm an executive for Double Mint Gum. I got twins, and I work for Double Mint Gum. 30 minutes elapsed. Another nurse comes out and says, is there a Mr. Jones in the waiting room? So yeah, there's Mr. Jones. Stood up sheepishly. Said, I'm Mr. Jones. Said, Mr. Jones, um, I got good news for you. Your wife just had triplets. Mr. Jones said, wow, that's something. Because I work for 3M. I work for 3M, and I got triplets. 20 minutes pass. Another nurse comes in the waiting room and says, is there a Mr. Smith? In this waiting room, Mr. Smith put out his cigarette. He said, Mr. Smith, you may want to come with me. Your wife just had uh, quadruplets. He says, wow, that's something. Because I worked for four seasons. The man who had twins worked for Double Mint Gum. man who worked for 3M had triplets. A man had quadruplets was the director at Four Seasons. There's only one man left in the waiting room. My last room man in the waiting room, before the nurse could even come out and ask for him, he took off running, ran out the waiting room, jumped in his car, they could hear the engine gunning, and he swerved out the parking lot. They said, what in the world is wrong with Mr. Williams? Why Mr. Williams run out there so fast? And the head nurse says, I know what happened. I was eavesdropping on your conversation. He got scared because Mr. Brown works for Double Mint Gum and had twins. Mr. Jones works for 3M and has triplets. Mr. Smith, hear this, is an executive at Four Seasons and had quadruplets. You must not know about Mr. Williams. No. What about Mr. Williams? I don't know where he works, but I know Mr. Williams goes to new birth. And new birth number is eight. And he's afraid his wife must be producing eight babies. He's scared of what it is. His production is going to be connected to where I go. I'm telling you, if you go to new birth, you ought to be running around your house right now. Because prophetically, I believe in the spirit realm, you getting ready to birth eight miracles. Eight blessings are getting ready to hit your life. I'm telling you, eight checks are getting ready to pile up from nowhere. Eight bills are getting ready to be paid off. You are protected. It's not because of the gloves. It's not because of the hand, dis hand disinfected. Not because of the goggles. Not because of the hazmat suit. But because you had enough faith to tithe. God said, because you've been faithful over a few things, I'm going to make you ruler over many. This Sunday is going to be absolutely amazing. It's going to be astounding. I'm telling you, I got goosebumps all over my arms right now. Excited about what God's going to do when he witnesses our divine obedience. 
I'm going to pray for you that those five things, those five benefits, those five pieces of armor are going to hit your life. I want you to lift up that hand. Come on, stretch out that hand wide like you're getting ready to give me a high five because I'm believing that you're going to get protection. I'm believing you're going to get provision. I'm believing that you're going to be a participant. I believe you're going to envelop the promise. And I believe that between now and Sunday, God is going to pay you for trusting him. Don't wait till the battle is over. Shout right now. We're tithing together on Sunday, but I want every person to give a sacrificial gift. If you believe that those, this word tonight resonates in your spirit, I want you to give a gift tonight. Here it is. I want to challenge your faith in 55. I want to ask you to give a gift of 55. I want you to give a seed of 55 on this night. You don't have 55. You're still uh, mustering your faith and your strength for Sunday. I want you to give 25. You're in between jobs. I want you to give 15. But I'm believing that all five of these things are going to be added to your life. I'm excited about your future, your destiny. And I'm excited about the five things that are going to overwhelm you. I want to be your pastor. I want Jesus to be your Lord. I want you to join our church. I want you to become connected in alignment. You've been a faithful visitor. But now I want you to be a committed member. I want you to understand that tithing is not man's scheme. It is God's plan. Come on, let's get started. Become a member today. Get excited about what God is going to do. It is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others. I'm convinced he'll do it for you. Saturday, if there are any of you who are dealing with food insecurity, meet me here at New Birth. I will be here from 10 to 12 how we want to be able to be a blessing to you and your family. You don't have a need. I want you to please share it with family and friends who may. Uh, those of you who God has put you in a position, I want you to sow into the king's table. I want you to make an investment. We've got so many testimonies of people whose lives have been blessed. I'm excited to serve and I'm grateful to be used. Get ready for the overflow. Sunday is going to be amazing. I don't want you to wait till 930. Come in early. And share your own testimony in the thread about what God has done. If nobody else told you, I want you to know your pastor loves you. I'm cheering for you, and I'm excited about your future.